What's good, y'all? Welcome back to a brand new video. Now, today we're continuing our one from every team series. When today we do one underappreciated player from every NBA team. Now, right off the bat, I gotta let you know that underrated and underappreciated are two different things, and I'll try to break that down right now. You know, when I was creating this list, I wasn't thinking about players that can fill it up one night but don't get their recognition, because that's underrated. I was thinking about players that could put up 12 points two rebounds and three assists and if you look at that stat line you don't think of that stat line as very important but in reality to that team's success that 12 points that three rebounds three assists could be exactly what they need from that player or you you look after a game for a team that you don't watch and you look at their stats you're like okay what well, this guy's not doing much but in reality this could be the best thing for his team so you'll you'll kind of understand a little bit more once we start going through this list but i'm just trying to let you know right off the bat i'm not saying that these players are necessarily underrated i'm just saying that they're underappreciated in their system all right before we get into it i gotta do my shout out to the day so shout out to everybody supporting the channel but let's get into it 76ers i have to go with robert covington now the reason i'm saying he's underrated because he's not a guy that's going to give you 20 points per game but he'll give you a solid 14 two and two basically what we said in the preview of this video but in reality that's exactly what they need from him they don't need him to take a lot of shots they need him to get there defend and make the open three and that's exactly what he's done for a couple years now and that's why he got paid this offseason he's has one of the best stories in the league coming from basically the d league to now being one of the most play, um, paid players on his team and part of the team's future. So Robert Covington is for the Philadelphia 76ers. Next, we got the Bucks. I got to go Chris Middleton here. Chris Middleton falls into both categories of underrated and under underappreciated. If you look at them play, there are games where he'll put up 15 points because they got Giannis. Giannis is their primary ball handler, but with that 15 points, Chris Middleton will shoot like four for five with a lot of free throws. The guy is a baller. And if you're not watching him play, you may not necessarily see that in the box score. But this year, he's averaging about 20 points per game. He was his player of the week for the Eastern Conference because he was the number one guy when Giannis was out for a couple games with an injury. So underrated and underappreciated Chris Middleton. Next, we got the Chicago Bulls. Now, you think about the Chicago Bulls you think in their future. You think about their core players, Zach Levine, um, Larry Marketing, and Chris Dunn. But a guy that has been very underappreciated so far this year is Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis is only 22 years old, but I feel like a lot of fans are writing him off already. But he's having the best year of his career off the bench. Now, I don't know this for, tr for truth, but it don't seem like he's upset about coming off the bench. And you need bench players like that for a rebuild and for the future of this team. If you can keep him okay with coming off the bench, and that basically about to be our sixth man now that we're trading Nico soon. We should be trading him soon. Um... I think he's just underappreciated as far as like the Bulls fans. We don't really love Bobby Portis as much as we probably should. The guy gives it all, so he's my underappreciated player for the Bulls. Next, we got the Cavs. Now, this is going to be different. It's not underappreciated to the public. It's underappreciated in his own team. And, of course, we talk about Kevin Love. You hear the reports of Isaiah Thomas and the rest of the team having this big meeting, and Kevin Love was one of the main focuses of, of basically – People talking bad about him, like, K-Love, you're not doing this, K-Love, you're not doing that. But in reality, he's their second best player right now. Isaiah Thomas hasn't proved to be a good player this year. He is the most consistent player other than, of course, LeBron James on his team. And I don't think he's getting respect from his teammates. Next for the Celtics, I got Terry Rozier. Now, you're probably looking at me like I'm crazy because Terry Rozier is not averaging much. But I've seen a lot of times this year where Terry Rozier is making a big time play late in the game. He is very, very clutch. Now he's not making game winners other than the game winning dunk he had against the Pacers. He's not making game winners, but he's making shots before game winners, or he's getting steals before the game winner that don't may not make into the final highlight reel. You gotta actually be watching this guy play. He's really, really clutch. Like a couple days ago against the, the Warriors, he came, he subbed into a game late in the fourth and instantly hit a big shot. I'm like, what? You, he waited for his time to be called, and he made the most out of his time. Now I kind of understand the jokes about Danny Ainge loving Terry Rozier. The guy's a baller. Now the Clipper one is a little bit different. We could have went Lou Will, but I think we and you can both agree that Lou Will's having the best year of his career, and he's getting the recognition he deserves. I'm going Tobias Harris. Now it is a little different because he just got traded to the team, has not played a single minute for them. But I look at the rest of that roster, and I know I don't know if anybody else is underappreciated. Tobias Harris, his unappreciation is carrying over from Detroit. Dude has got better every single year. I thought he should have been a conversation to make the All-Star game. I don't think he should have made it, but he should have been in the conversations. The Grizzlies, I gotta go with Dylan Brooks. It's kind of weird because there's not many players on that team I'm looking at, and I think it's underappreciated. But I gotta go Dylan Brooks because when you look at the 2017 draft class, there are a lot of great players that came out of that are getting a lot of 
a star time or a lot of TV time, but Dylan Brooks has silently been one of the better rookies from the 2017 draft class, so he's the underappreciated one for that team. The Hawks, Terry and Prince. When you think about the Hawks and their rebuild, you think about Dennis Strudy, you think about John Collins, and a guy that you should also be thinking about is Torian Prince. He's only 23 going on 24 years old, and this year, his sophomore year, he's played a lot better. Um, so he's underappreciated in the, in the fact that you may not look at him as one of their core pieces for their rebuild, but I think he's one of those guys. Goran Dragic. Now, with John Wall being out for the All-Star break or for the next six to eight weeks, there's going to be a replacement for the All-Star game, and I think it is it, it's deservingly probably going to go to Ben Simmons or Goran Dragic. Goran Dragic is, is underappreciated because he is the star player on a team that is fourth in the Eastern Conference. I would say Hassan Whiteside, but when I watched him play, Hassan's not playing clutch time minutes anymore. Goran Dragic is the heart of that team, so he's also the most undervalued as far as like the world's perception of him hornets sorry dog y'all not winning games and only player on that team that's actually really playing is kevin walker and maybe dwight howard now the jazz one is a little bit weird here because this guy is underappreciated but he's also overpaid and i don't know if that's going to happen very often we talk about joe ingles um they gave him big time money because they were trying to bring him back for gordon hayward because apparently they were friends but nonetheless, he's been having a pretty solid year. But for the, the paycheck, it's, it's kind of... Oh, I'm just going to go Joe Ingles, all right? The underappreciated player for the Kings is De'Aaron Fox. Now, again, with 2017 draft class, there are a lot of rookies that are getting a lot of screen time. But recently, De'Aaron Fox has been really filling it up. He started off this, this year rough, like most rookies do. But over the last 10 or so games, he's been great. Game one and dunk a couple nights ago. And now with them trying to trade George Hill, he's getting the complete keys to the team. And I think that's important for his development. But as the world's perception, he's very, very underappreciated. Go ahead and watch De'Aaron Fox play. I guess the Spurs do a six for six for three. The dude can play. Be easy, Beasley, all right? Leave it at that. Beasley's having one of the best years of his career coming back after a couple years of not being in the league, basically. Underappreciated. I'm going Jordan Clarkson here. Now, now, the reason I'm going Jordan Clarkson is because he is a quality player in this league. He can score the ball really well. Now, obviously, he's in trade rumors. In reality, he will he probably won't be a Laker come February 8th after the trade deadline. He won't be a Laker. And it's not because he can't play, but it's more in the fact that the Lakers are trying to sign this big-time free agent this offseason. So somebody has to go, and it's going to be him because they paid him. He's going to go to another team and really ball out for them too. So I think he's underappreciating the fact that Lakers fans want him gone, but y'all should realize that the guy's pretty good still. Orlando Magic. We got to go with Aaron Gordon here. All right, Aaron Gordon is the only guy in like the last eight to 10 years that the Orlando Magic have drafted that turned into a player for the future. And that's saying something. They were in the lottery for this long and they have not hit on many of their draft picks besides Aaron Gordon. He's only 22 years old. He's getting better and better. And he is a legitimate number one option right now. Of course, his team sucks, but hopefully in the future they can build around him and he can be their star piece. Mavericks, I'm going JJ Barea. Who knew that post 30 JJ Barea was going to be this much of a baller? Very underappreciated player. The Nets, Spencer Dinwiddie. And I'm saying underappreciated throughout the league, okay? Spencer Dinwiddie's story is really crazy. He jumped from G League team to G League team. He played for my Bulls. He played for the Pistons. He's been, it seems like he's been almost everywhere. But he's found a place in Brooklyn that gave him an extreme chance. And with D'Angelo Russell and Jeremy Lamb being out with an injury, he stepped it up big time for that team. And he's grown some fans, and he's gonna be a legit. He's gonna get a. He's gonna get paid this offseason, not max type money, but some team is gonna give him a multiple year deal, and he can settle down and be comfortable because he's been one year there, three months here. Spencer Dinwiddie, congratulations, buddy. Nuggets, Gary Harris. Now you talk about the Nuggets. You also you always hear Nikola Jokic, hear about Paul Millsap, who of course injury, but still a really great player. You hear about the youth of Jamal Murray, but a guy that's silently still getting better and better every year. It's Gary Harris. The dude is only 23 year old, years old. That core, their core of Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, Nikola Jokic, their three of their top four players are all under 24 years old. Think about that. They're competing for a playoff spot when three of their top four players are under 24 years old. Next at the Pacers, we got Demonte Sabonis. We think about the Paul George trade. Nobody expected them to get back two pieces for their future, Victor Lipo and Demonte Sabonis. Demonte Sabonis' first year as, as OKC Thunder was basically mediocre he's just like an average rookie but this year he has stepped it up and been really well especially with mouse turner being out a lot this year he's really stepped it up it's got to be anthony davis now i understand he's an all-star starter we all know that anthony davis is good but i don't know if we appreciate how great anthony davis really is 
I've said it on our show since the beginning of the season. Anthony Davis has played himself into, in my opinion, a top five player in his league. And I don't know if many people agree with that, but that's just my personal opinion. And with, with him and DeMarcus Cousins, I think we took for granted that front court and how great they were in the period of time they were together. And hopefully they could come back and DeMarcus resigns. And I, I, I don't know what the future that team is looking like, but you got to watch Anthony Davis to know just how special the guy is. Next, we got the Pistons. I got to go Drummond here just because he, he you look at his numbers. He's putting up like 14 to 14, which are good numbers. But you don't really understand how important those numbers are for that team. Again, like I said in the beginning, those 14 points per game are really clutch. He's their best player on their team, averaging 14 points per game. Get a 14 rebounds, probably the best rebounder we have in today's game. Very underappreciated. Um, they're fighting for a playoff spot. You know, they just did a big trade last night. Who knows what the future this team's gonna look like? But let's let's appreciate Drummond for what he is right now. Raptors. Yaka Poto. Am I saying his name right? Probably not. But I'm just going to say Yaka. He has made it, at his young age of 22 years old, he has made Jonas Valanciunas expendable. You, he's he, He's got a bright future in his leg. There are times I'm watching him, I'm like, wow, that's a great defensive play. Or wow, that's a great finish. Now, with him being 22 years old, he ha does have periods of time where he completely disappears. But when he's playing well, he's playing well. And that's why I think he makes Jonas Valanciunas expendable. Trade him here and have Yaka Poto be the starting center of the future. So let's appreciate that. Rockets, Clint Capella. Without Clint Capella in the lineup, I think that team is 1 and 4 or even 0 and 5. He missed five games in a row this season and they were looking bad. Clint Capella is very, very important to this team. Other than James Harden and Chris Paul, he's the number three most important player on that team. The Spurs' most underappreciated player is Lamarcus Aldridge. He has been having an amazing year, but if you look at the general public, people don't believe he deserves to be an all star. But if you're leading a team to, like, they're a contender without. Their best player in the league and their best player. Next, you got the Spurs and the most underappreciated player on the Spurs. I got to go LaMarcus Aldridge because though he's having one of the best years of his career, there are people out there that still don't believe he deserves to be an all-star this year. And I think that's baloney. I, I think the guy is playing amazing and he's keeping a team afloat that's missing their number one option. Kawhi Leonard has not played much this year, y'all. And that team is still contending for a top seed in the Eastern, a Western Conference. Very underappreciated. Go ahead, make that all-star game money, LaMarcus. The Suns, I got to go with Josh Jackson. Now, Josh Jackson came into the scene. I was not impressed with what I saw the first 10 or 15 games. But again, I don't judge a player's future based on the first 10 or 15 games. But the last seven, he's had multiple 20-point games, some 18-point games, 16-point games. He's actually scoring the ball a lot more than I thought he could. And that has been underrated over the, I, I have not heard anybody talking about the recent success of josh jackson so that for that reason he is underappreciated timberwolves it's got to be tyus jones little secret between us two the timberwolves are better with tyus jones on the floor and not jeff teague go look it up the thunder has to go to steven adams just the other night i was watching the philly versus thunder game and the guy was unstoppable on the offensive glass i think he fin finished with double digit offensive rebounds stuff like that are not normal but his intensity on the glass his intensity on defense are very very normal that's why he's the most underappreciated player on that team blazers was a little hard for me i went with bass because again similar to what i said with spencer dinwiddie bass uh sebastian napier has jumped from this team to this team to this team to this team and with damian lillard being now for a while with an injury sebastian napier kept them afloat and kept them in the playoff spot along with of course cj but if you lose your star point guard um, you need somebody to step it up, and that's what Sebastian Napier did. The Warriors, I gotta go David West. At 37 years old, he still averages seven points per game. Now, that, that may not sound crazy, but he's playing legitimate minutes on a team that's competing to be the best team in NBA history. 37. And still playing defense and everything. Now, with the Wizards, I gotta go Kelly Oubre. Now, Kelly Oubre being the backup small four, he may not get a lot of shine, but in reality, there are times where I'm watching him play, and he just tears it up, offensively and defensively. The guy can play high beast. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave it a like. Um, comment of the day. Let me know an underappreciated player or your team that I may not have mentioned in this video. I'll see y'all tomorrow.